two children survive. One of them is taken to Persia and we don't know anything about him. And the second person is uh, taken to the Greek territory, to Caesarea. And there he is raised in a Christian family and receives the name Gregory. And this is the Gregory who is going to come to Armenia later on and baptize uh, the Armenian people. And we recently had uh, another lecture in Oxford on uh, Yerisha, and there was also this idea mentioned that women can become even Vartapet, which is a very um, uh, important uh, position in the Armenian church, and only men could, at least nowadays, can achieve that level. Vartapet is uh, like the doctor of the church who is allowed to teach. But in Yerisha, he says that the Armenian women became Vartapets, and they taught their husbands just because some of them decided to forget the Armenian, uh, the religion of Armenians. And in Zoroastrian religion, women um, have a quite decent role. Well, they are a king, a bagrated king, uh, who is depicted with his wife and his daughter, and his daughter is in the center. So he kind of wants to transfer the power to his daughter mm. so that she can become the, the king or the queen of Armenia in that case. Community Council, I would like to thank you all for coming to honor our new ambassador, Dr. Armen Sarkisian, who has today, in fact, presented his credentials to Her Majesty the Queen. Therefore, we can call him ambassador officially today. <laughs> Armenia desperately needs to enjoy the friendship and support of the influential powers of this world such as Great Britain. And therefore, it is fundamentally important that the representative of the Republic of Armenia in this country should be a person of the highest stature and integrity, and one who is capable 
of culturing good relations between Britain and Armenia at all levels. Who better, therefore, than the newly reappointed Ambassador Armen Sarkisyan? And of course, the Armenian community and then Church Council was a fundamental institution of this community. And of course, Ara, there is no way I will forget the day, and I hope that you all remember, when the Armenian embassy, which was the first embassy abroad that Armenia had, was opened here in London. I mean, the support that Armenia, in the name of me, has, has gotten, the financial support, academic support, support in, 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 I mean, your time. I was just a scientist who was asked to open an embassy. And the magic happened in a couple of months. We had the, 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 the building, we had the finances, huge donations by the community. In one or two weeks, I had seven young girls as my secretary. And we didn't have to pay any of them. And they were working, working and if necessary, for 24 hours, not even 12 hours, but 8 hours. And all of your support was great. And I will never forget that. And I think nobody should forget that. And Armenia will never forget that. I think it's, there's a great, great thank you to you. And of course, I will never remember, forget the day when we had to open an embassy and we had the evening before. And when the first time abroad, the Armenian flag was blessed. Yes. And it was blessed at the then St. Peter's Church, now St. Yerish is the church. And I do remember it's in, in front of my eyes to prominent gentlemen of the age representing the Armenian communities and the diaspora abroad Caring, I mean, I, I do remember that one of those gentlemen was your father. Yes. And of course, Mr. Palamudian. And when I do remember their faces, how they were carrying their, this flag, it was just a, a real act of handing over to the next generation, which is our generation, the responsibility of taking care of our country, our motherland, and our nation. So that's the story, and that was 22 years ago. Fantastic story that I will never uh, forget. Of course, when I was the first time asked to present my credentials to Her Majesty, I do remember uh, when we were entering the Buckingham Palace in those days, you could have the band, the royal band, playing the <laughs> national anthem. So when we were entering there and the national anthem was played, I do remember that I had tears, which is difficult. So, 22 years, things changed. We had the embassy uh, working successfully in building up relations between Britain and Armenia. I had to go back and serve my country, so serve our country as Prime Minister. I had to resign because of my uh, bad health, so I served again for a short period of time. Then, for a while, starting from end of 99, I was a free man. Basically doing uh, many things, including trying to help Armenia in different ways. Now, what has changed during these 22 years? Uh, as I told you, ladies have not changed, all the remaining has changed. <laughs> One of the things is that uh, maybe our Armenian community and church council has changed as well. It's the Armenian community council. <laughs> yeah, now it's Armenian community council. Uh, but it's still the, representing the Armenian community here in the UK. So it has changed, but it has not changed. The community probably has changed. Some people tell me that this community is now twice bigger than it was 22 years ago. And fortunately or unfortunately, we have a lot of Armenians from Armenia that have moved from Armenia here. So they are a part of this community. So we have to embrace them and we have to keep their, their connection to Armenia with the hope that one day we all go back. So there is a change. It's as well as, oh, you are a small state, you, uh, Azerbaijan is much bigger, and it will be difficult for Armenia to, to basically defend Karabakh or the Karabakh people to, to de defend their homeland. Because there was all simple mathematics. So Azerbaijan was bigger a couple of times, they had more military equipment, they had this, they had that. But what happened in real life at the end of you go back and we remember 93, 94, 95, small Armenia, even smaller Karabakh have defended themselves and proven that we are a nation that can stand for ourselves and we're a strong nation that 
a nation can, that can win. So, 22 years after, now I hear the same story. Ah, Azerbaijan has the oil, they are, says, they are just earning billions of dollars. Thanks to us, because we allow them to have the bottle of BDC Jayan. <laughs> we didn't stop them. But they do have it. And again, it's the same story. Ah, uh, we will lose Karabakh or something will happen. Azerbaijan is much stronger. But that's all mathematics. The real life, life is algebra. It's much more complex. So you win wars not on the numbers of people, but the power of your soul and uh, basically the power of your will of doing something for your country. So what is more important is not how many you are, how determined you are, and how ready you are to basically to take your cause more forward. And from that point of view, I hope that we are as strong as 22 years ago. There is no way a country of Armenians who are very individual people. They are people, it's a worldwide nation of free people. This is the way I see my homeland. It's a small country, but a worldwide nation of free people. So I think democracy, freedom, strength of every individual that could be counted and put in, in, in a big force counts. It's very important. So there are huge challenges ahead. But we are a nation that can deliver. Uh, Ara, you were saying, yes, April is coming and then uh, 2015 will be 100 years of the genocide. What is genocide? Are we here again going to seek the Turkish side to recognize that? Let me just say what I do believe. At the end of the day, at the bottom line, as an Armenian, I don't care who recognizes or not. Because 100 years is not only 100 years of the huge tragedy and massacre, but it's also 100 years of the survival of a nation that has proven that they can live after death. And this is a nation that you are those people who have proven that you can live after death, which came to our nation in 1915. And we're living now, we are strong, and we're delivering that we will be forever. And this is the 100 years of revival strength and proving to everybody including those who don't want to recognize anything, that we're a strong nation and we can go forward. So it's up to church. Ինչպես գիտեք, համանքային խորութը շուրջ 60 տարի է, որ Անգլիահայ համանքի մեջ աշխատում է։ Միասին համատեղ աշխատելու համանքի կարիքներ ու հոգալու համար, թե գրթական ասվարեզում, թե միությունական, հավակական եւ ընտանեկան ասվարեզներում։ Այս ընթացքին նաեւ հոգևոր իմաստով նաև հետամուտ է եղել երեկցական հարցերին որը սակայն վերջերս փոխանցվեց մեջ միածնի կառույցային դրվածքին համապահասխան լինելու ընդհանրապես ցանազան համայնքների կաղութների կառույցներին եւ թերևս ավելի կարևորը երեկցական հարցերը կամ հոգևոր հարցը բաժանելով համայնքային խորհրդի պարտականություններից առիթ ունենանք ավելի կենտրոնանալու համայնքի կարիքները հոգալու աշխատանքին դա լուրջ հանձնարություն է եւ ինչպես ոլորտ եւս թե ձեր ընտանիքի միջոցով եւ թե համայնքային համայնքի կյանքին մասնակից լինելու զանազան ասպարեզներում այդ փորձառությունները ունեցել եք թե ինչպես կարելի է հավաքական ոգով աշխատել եւ ձգտել մեր համայնքի ապագան ավելի պայծառ վիճակի մեջ բերելու։ Այս ուղղությամբ ուրեմն մարալ ջեքմենը անգլերենով այս բարագային համայնքային խորհրդի պատվող քարտուղար պետք է փոխանցի ձեզ համայնքային խորհրդի ընդհանուր պատկերացումը մեր ապագա ծրագրերի մասին։ Now look forward to what the following few years 
will be for the ACC. And the Council has identified three areas of focus moving forward. The first of these is to raise funds to establish a community centre with the objective of accommodating the schools, scouts and sports organisations, which all together pay approximately £80,000 a year in rent, which goes to help other organisations. I'm sure that you will agree with us that the community could use these resources far better internally. We do appreciate that this is a formidable challenge and would require the support of all of the community in order to establish a centre on a solid foundations. We also realise that without a community centre, we miss the opportunity of offering an environment for our younger generation to flourish. The second area we plan to focus on is the identification and registration of all UK Armenians not currently in our register. This will enable us to perform statistical analysis to understand the broader needs of the community that are not currently being served. It will also enable us to extend our Hamite newsletter, which currently goes to over 3,000 homes, to a wider audience, and hopefully electronically. Final area of focus is to work towards improving the cooperation within the community organisations. All individuals and groups need to be treated with dignity and respect, regardless of cultural background, religious beliefs or political leanings. Cooperation with key organisations such as Kaya, AGBU and Homent Men would be critical in this respect. I'm sure you will join us in realising that unless we promote a policy of inclusion, we cannot realise all of our objectives. On a final note, above all, we hope that you continue to enjoy volunteering for the, serving the community, because if we do, then we are more than likely going to be successful in what we endeavour to do.
living the 